Despite previous efforts to repair it, the power switch in this Game Boy Advance needed a replacement unit. So I ordered an aftermarket switch from Z Labs, which features a more modern switch component mounted onto a PCB that's shaped to help you align it perfectly and solder points that allow easy access to the pads on the motherboard. In this video, I'll show you how to remove the old switch, install the new one, and help you get back to playing your games. Hi and welcome back to The Shed. I'm Joe Bleeps and in this video I'll be guiding you through the process of installing a replacement power switch on a Game Boy Advance console. Now if you want to try this out for yourself I'd really appreciate it if you ordered the parts using the affiliate link I've left in the description. It doesn't cost you any extra but I do get a small commission from each sale so you're helping support this channel and if you use the code Joe Bleeps at the checkout you'll also get a 5% discount. So how easy is it to swap out your switch? Let's take a look. This Game Boy Advance is one that I've investigated before and I've repaired the power switch on it a couple of times now. It worked for a while, but as we can see here with a pair of fresh alkaline batteries, I try switching it on and I get nothing. It wouldn't switch on no matter how many times I move the switch, no matter how gently or if I'm pushing slightly up or down, it just wouldn't turn on the console. Although I've already refurbished the switch and that does usually do the trick. In, in the case of this particular one, it was likely just too far gone from the after effect of battery corrosion damage and, and just needed replacing. What I bought from Z Labs is a tiny little power switch board kit for the Game Boy Advance that sells for £3.22. Opening up the packaging for a closer look, you can see that the switch itself doesn't need directly soldering. It's slightly smaller and mounted onto a PCB with two anchor points at the side and four points on the edge to connect the pads on the motherboard once the old switch is removed. To open the console, there are six tri-wing screws on the back and one Phillips head screw in the battery compartment all of which will need removing. After this, you can remove the back shell and take out the side bumpers and the shoulder buttons. Now, at this point, I could see clearly that the metal casing over the top of the old switch had broken. I'd repaired it a while back with a bunch of solder, but it hadn't withstood that continuous motion of flicking the switch on and off, and it had come away again with all the main parts falling out of the component itself. The inside was very dirty and the solder points nearby were worn and corroded, so it made sense at this point to attempt the total replacement instead of going in for another repair. To replace the switch it's best to remove the motherboard from the shell starting with the screen ribbon. Two spudges or even your fingernails will help to get the tabs unclipped and then you can carefully pull the ribbon out of its socket and remove the three Phillips screws holding the motherboard in place. After that you can lift out the motherboard and put the rest of the assembly to one side. Looking at the old switch there are four pins in a row on the inside edge and one on either side for the ground shield that kind of act as anchor points to hold the switch steady in place. Looking at the new switch you can see how its solder points tally up nicely with that layout. There are a number of ways to remove the old switch however as it was a bit messy already I decided not to go prodding around with a soldering iron this time and use a heat gun instead. Now if you're using a heat gun you'll want to avoid any damage to the surrounding components so I masked all of these off with some Kapton tape which is a thermal and electrical insulator and a quick way to protect the parts we don't want heating. I set the heat gun to a high temperature around 300 degrees and set a low airflow to keep the heat contained in a specific area. Once the solder showed signs of melting, I gently lifted away the switch with tweezers, being careful not to be too eager and tear off any solder pads from the motherboard. Thankfully, that all went smoothly. Afterwards, I again used the tweezers to heat the solder and lift out any broken remnants of that ground shield. The overall area was quite dirty, so I cleaned it up a little bit with isopropyl alcohol and a cotton bud. I wasn't going to be using a heat gun beyond this point, so I carefully removed the tape and set up the motherboard on a magnetic PCB clamp I got from eBay recently that's actually quite handy for holding these little motherboards from handheld consoles in place. It's not perfect, but I think I paid about a tenner for it, and it's always fun to get new toys, isn't it? I used my soldering iron and my solder sucker to lift off any remaining blobs of the old solder. I added some new solder into the mix to try and refresh the pads, but on further inspection, the pads did look a little worn. So I added a good layer of liquid flux all over the surface and on the back of the new switch before putting it in place for soldering. I started with the left anchor point. I got it roughly in place and melted some solder into the hole, then held it in position and put the point of my iron right into the hole so it made contact with the motherboard and provided a secure fit. When I inspected the switch afterwards, it was clear that it wasn't quite centered. So I reheated the pad 
move the switch and let it cool. I repeated this a few times until I was happy it was in the right spot. After that, a visual inspection showed it was lined up correctly. However, with it being so close to the other components and the four main pads being tricky to get at, I decided to move it out so it overhangs the edge of the motherboard ever so slightly. I then soldered the anchor point at the other end and then added a little more solder to each of these two points to secure them in place and make sure that enough solder had flowed down to attach it to the motherboard. I tested the movement of the switch it's actually got a much more satisfying click than the original part and felt really sturdy in place so I felt ready at this point to move on to the next step. So the row of four pads is definitely the tricky part to do but some careful preparation will make it quite a lot easier. I put plenty of flux across the whole area. This gets the solder to flow to the solder points and prevents it from spreading or bridging across to any other points where you don't want it. I used a very fine point tip on my soldering iron and made sure it was clean. I used my tip cleaner and a damp sponge. The tip cleaner is great for removing any deposits from the tip and tinning it with a thin shiny coating of solder. Think about the angle your hands are going to be coming in from to do it and rotate the board to an angle that makes it more comfortable to access those solder points. Have the iron almost vertical so it avoids the other components and is able to make contact with the solder points on the motherboard and the switch PCB at the same time. With the iron still in place, add in a little solder at the top. It should melt pretty much instantly and then start to flow down towards the motherboard. When you've seen this flow happening, you can move the iron away and repeat these steps on the other three pads. After this, a visual inspection should be enough to see if it's connected properly. Now I decided a continuity check with a multimeter would be a bit fiddly at this point, so I just went ahead and did a partial reassembly for the testing instead. Before putting the motherboard back on, I got into the display area so I could remove a little bit of annoying debris that got in front of my IPS screen. So if you've got anything like that to do, it's well worth doing when your console is open. I reattached the ribbon cable to the motherboard, being careful to clip down both sides securely, and then put the motherboard in place and reinserted the three short Phillips head screws. To test, I used my USB testing clips from Z Labs. You just plug it into a power source and connect the red clip to the positive battery terminal and the black one to the negative, and then it's safe to try out the switch, which thankfully for me worked perfectly first try. Now, if it doesn't work, don't despair. You should be able to reflow those solder points with your soldering iron and a little more flux, perhaps adding a little bit more solder if needed without having to remove the motherboard all over again. Keep doing this and keep testing until you get your desired result. If you don't have the test kit, never fear. You can just pop the back shell on temporarily and put the batteries in. No need for shoulder buttons and screws to be in place. When you've established it's working, it's time for final reassembly. Carefully check your switch cover fits in place over your new switch and then add the two side bumpers and the shoulder buttons before putting the rear shell in place. Make sure everything fits securely. Wiggle in your L and R buttons to engage the hinge if need be and then reinsert your six tri-wing screws, being careful not to go too tight. You're just putting the screws in until you feel that bit of resistance. Finally, put the black Phillips screw back in place, insert your batteries, replace your battery cover and give it a test. Turning it on and off a few times, as I said, there's very satisfying click. I've often found with the original switches, there isn't always a definite engagement and it can sometimes power off if it's knocked or it won't switch on if it's not quite all the way but with this one the tactile feedback is so much better and the switch clicks much more securely in place at each end it's definitely an improvement on the original it feels great it works well and it was really satisfying to install I thought it might be quite a difficult job to remove and replace the switch, so I was pleasantly surprised with how smoothly the whole process went. Bizarrely, it's actually transformed the feel of the whole console. It feels like new as soon as you switch it on. If you want to try this out for yourself and you want to order the parts needed or indeed any other modding gear, I'd be grateful if you did use those affiliate links I've left in the description for Z Labs. It won't cost you any extra, as I say, but I will get a small commission that helps me keep this channel running. And it's a nice little bonus that you get that 5% off your order if you use that code Joe Bleeps at the checkout. As always, thanks for watching. I am always lurking in the comments, so if there's anything you want to ask, feel free. And if you'd like to see more like this, be sure to subscribe and sign up for notifications. Let's keep this little channel growing. So this is Joe Bleeps signing off from the shed. If you want to keep watching, there should be some more videos popping up for you here, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.